It's a cartoon for tweens about biblical themes. They produce little plays, they get carried away. A flamingo, a sock, yeah, most things can talk. Connect. There's Tina and Joey and Becky and Todd. There's Lena and Jerry, they're already on fire. They still find a way to learn more about God. God. Hark! The bountiful land of Egypt lay before us, Sarai, my beautiful wife. Doesn't look very bountiful. It looks sandy and geometric. Abram, why did we come here? We came here because the bounty in Canaan was, well, unbountiful. And why did we go to Canaan? Because God told me to. Why would God care where we live? Uh, because I'm blessed, Becky. How is moving hundreds of miles away from the only home you've ever known to live in a desolate wasteland a blessing? Why are you building an altar? Altar building is a pretty standard clause in most covenants. What is a covenant? <laughs> you don't know what a covenant is? You don't know what a covenant is? Oh my goodness, Becky Frederick doesn't know what a covenant is. Do you know what a covenant is? I have no idea, but that's to be expected. Wait. What is that music? Oh yeah, change the subject, go ahead. Ah, ah, ah. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Covenant Crashers, the game where you with a higher power are bound to one another for all eternity. Here's your host, your favorite goldfish and mine, Rembrandt Amsterdam the Third. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And welcome to Covenant Crashers, let's play. Ton, you're up. Todd, you've been chosen to relocate to Canada. Fair enough, be back in a second. But Todd didn't have any say. You just told him to go to Canada and he went. That's right. You see, a covenant is like a two-way promise on steroids. I'm confused. Which brings us to the covenant not a covenant bonus round. This is Tina, your best friend from the second grade. On a pinky swear, you promised to be best friends forever. Now, Becky, was this promise a covenant? Uh, yes? Pull the knot and see. Not a covenant. You are incorrect. Congratulations! You're still in a covenant with God. Now, behind door number two, Lena, your old underling at your childhood lemonade stand. You hired Lena to assist you during the morning rush. You promised her $3 an hour, but then fired her over a dress code violation. Now, was this business deal a covenant? Yes. Pull the knot and see. That's incorrect. Congratulations! You're still bound in a covenant with the Lord Almighty. Door number three. Becky, your parents have been married for 15 years. Is your parents' marriage a covenant? No, I guess. Pull the knot and see. Incorrect! Congratulations! You're still bound in a covenant with the Lord Almighty. But why? Why are the other two not covenants and my parents' marriage is a covenant? Because marriage is a lifelong spiritual promise that engages the spouses, God, and community in a grace-filled relationship. But remember, while marriage is a covenant, our covenant with God is even more lasting and powerful. Which leads us to our final quadruple penultimate omni-round! Becky, you will have 15 seconds to answer in the form of a question, our final answer. This spiritual agreement, initiated by the Lord and accepted by humanity, spans across the entire biblical story and stands as testament to the good and the glory of God and God's commitment to restoring God's relationship with all of creation. <laughs> Becky, that's time. Did you come up with an answer? Correct! Rudy, tell her what she's won! Congratulations, Becky! You just won Covenant Crashers! You're going home with, as always, an eternal covenant with the Lord Almighty, brought to you by the Lord God! So, basically, I can do whatever I want, and I'm still in a covenant with God. We're still responsible for holding up our end of the covenant, but when we mess up, God's grace continually works to draw us back in. Genesis and the many books to follow are filled with examples of humans forgetting, neglecting, and willfully disregarding their end of the bargain.
But God does not let us go despite our constant waywardness, but rather seeks to overcome it. So God never gives up on us. Never, ever, ever, Becky. Well, that's all the time we have for Covenant Crashers. Join us next time as we miraculously appear every single time the definition of covenant is questioned out loud anywhere, anytime. Hey, Todd. How is Canada? I'm a whole new man, Becky. Oh? When God sent me to Canada, I found Professor Fuzzy Pants here. He was displaced when we demolished that mountain for the Tower of Babel. <laughs> Many were harmed in our blind ambition. God sent me out on a journey to make things right. Oh. Hey, I know what a covenant is now. I still do not. What is a covenant? Ladies no! and gentlemen, welcome. Come here, my firstborn son Esau. And kiss me. I'm not kissing you, Todd. The script calls for Jacob to kiss Isaac. I'll meet you halfway. Jacob pats Isaac on the back. Well, that's not exactly biblically accurate, but... Just get on with it. <sighs> May those who curse you be cursed, and those who bless you be blessed. And cue Esau's entrance. My father. Who are you? It is I, your firstborn son, Esau. Who was it then that hunted game and brought it to me? It was him that I blessed. Father, an imposter has stolen my blessing. I call for a do-over. I retract my old blessing and give my blessing to the right recipient, Esau. Todd, your script seems to be taking a rather severe departure from the Bible. Oh, I see. Becky can turn a kiss into a pat on the shoulder, but Todd can't rewrite pages and pages of Genesis to correct the obvious typos that litter its verses. Typos? Yes, Becky, typos. Obviously, Isaac wouldn't let Jacob keep Esau's blessing. That wouldn't be fair. Well, hi ho, kids. I'm here to perform the final inspection for this month's cleanest cubby contest. I thought I had until the end of the day. How can you just spring? this on me. Becky, you win every month. You've won 27 months in a row. And if I win this month, it's 28, which breaks the old record, meaning I win the ultimate trophy, the Golden Heel. I need to buy cleaning supplies. Becky, we're in the judging portion of the contest. There's no time to clean. There's no time not to! Hmm. Todd, a minor improvement over last month. Well done. I've done absolutely nothing different. Becky, such a dramatic fall. I don't have a choice. I must award the prize to Todd. This has been a long time coming. What is the meaning of this? I'm sorry, Becky. I've already awarded the prize to Todd. I demand a recount. Well, here's Todd's cubby, and here's yours. Considering Todd's marked improvement and your marked decline, I had to award it to Todd. But none of this is mine! What isn't yours? I don't collect baseball cards, I don't purchase penny candy, and I certainly do not own a teddy bear named Becky. Well, if they're not yours, why are they in your cubby? I don't know! I saw the whole thing. Becky's not to blame. Todd. Todd is the culprit. Hold on. Are you going to believe me or the talking wall of cubbies? I'm going to have to go with the talking cubbies. Tell us what you saw, a wall of cubbies. Well, here's how it went down. Ah. <sighs> <sighs> and that is how all of those things ended up in Becky's cubby. All right, I did it. I'm sorry. See? See? He doesn't deserve the prize. He admits it. The prize has already been given. I can't just take it back. But it's not fair. Of course it isn't fair. Life is not fair. And take the story of Esau and Jacob. Jacob grasped Esau's heel to escape the womb, and then continued to be a heel his entire life. Their father Isaac mistakenly gave his blessing to Jacob. But even when he realized his mistake, he didn't take the blessing away. God's promise is available even to the undeserving. Blessings of this sort 
can't be rescinded. No, they cannot. And, and, can you please define rescinded? It means they won't make you give up your plaque. I concur wholeheartedly. The point is that God can bless everyone, even a dishonest heel like Jacob. And then that blessing sticks. It's not taken away. None of us deserve God's blessing, but God blesses us just the same. Do you understand? Yeah, I guess I do. Well, based on that conversation, I have some serious rewriting to do on that Jacob and Esau script. Ugh, I was so close. Think of it as an incentive to keep your cubby clean for another 28 months. If you're diligent, you'll break that record. You know what? He's right. I'm going to break that record yet. We shall see, Becky. We shall see. My wives, handmaidens, and possessions have made it safely across the river. And now I, Jacob, son of Isaac, have a decision to make. I could wait here to face my brother Esau, who most likely wants to kill me. Or I could continue to flee from him. But how long must I flee for the rest of my life? How can I go on? Ah! Ah! Oh, yeah! Yeah! Let's get ready to Wumbo! Yeah! You say I'm now. <laughs> Whoa! Please, let me go. It is daybreak. I will not let you go unless you bless me. What is your name? Jacob. Your name will no longer be Jacob, but Israel, because you have struggled with God and with humans and have overcome. Great job, Todd. You too, Becky. Did you actually hurt your leg? No. <laughs> I think it best if I stay in character. Okay. Oh. Hi, Murphy. Congratulations, Becky. Mother insisted I come backstage to acknowledge your hard work. Um, thanks, Murphy. You're very welcome, Becky. See you at our parents' home. Yeah, bye. Who was that guy? My older brother, Murphy. He's back from boarding school. Your brother? The one who drove your parents' car through the front window of Larry's hardware store? That brother? Poor Larry's hardware. The hinge and fixture aisle never recovered. <sighs> It's all my fault! <laughs> it's all my fault! Becky, what are you talking about? <laughs> it's such a disaster! Becky, disaster is my middle name. Don't hold back on my account. Well, it all started when I was on my bed reading my Z magazine. Murphy! Murphy, we gotta go to the mall! We have to go to the mall! Dustin Hart is there! How? Our parents aren't here. You! You can drive us! Becky, I am underage and unlicensed. No! No, you went through confirmation last spring. That makes you licensed to drive. I've never heard of that ordinance. It just passed the city council. I will go get my confirmation papers. Will you get it out of park already? Okay. Nice and easy We're now. We're missing Dustin Hart! No! Ah! Oh, there it is! Ah, there he is! There he is! Park, park, park! Ah! My parents were so angry. They sent Murphy to boarding school the very next day. And the worst part is, I never told anyone that it was all my fault. Wow. So your brother must be super mad at you. That's just it. I don't know. What if he hasn't forgiven me? What if he wants revenge? <gasps> <laughs> and what about my parents? If they find out, they'll ground me for like a billion years. Young lady, you are grounded for like a billion years. I know I should confess, but what if it's too late? What if it's been so long that God will never forgive me? But why did God allow this to happen in the first place? How is it fair that it's all on me to make this right? I mean, where is God in all of this mess? Is God going to back me up or am I on my own? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold the phone, Becky. I'm pretty sure you're not allowed to question God's will or intentions. But what am I supposed to do when I don't understand what God is doing? It's simple. All you need to do is blindly believe whatever other people tell you. Christianity isn't about struggling with doubts and questions. It's about having absolute certainty certainty that whatever you've been told to believe is right. So you don't have doubts? 
Oh, I have doubts all the time. But I just take all my fears and unanswered questions and shove them down into my emotional fanny pack. You have an emotional fanny pack? I have several emotional fanny packs. Like they say, don't question God, just smile and nod. You know it's a good motto because it rhymes. Todd, that's horrible advice. Ah, but not if we're certain that it's great advice. Absolute certainty is a dangerous thing, Todd. For certainty is the opposite of rest the opposite of faith. Todd, did your armpit just talk? Do you mind? Much better. Fret not about fretting, Becky. The fact that you're in the midst of spiritual crisis is a sign of maturity and thoughtfulness. It is? Wrestling with God is not something only Jacob did, but something we all do. It's not only okay to occasionally struggle with questions and doubt. It's an essential part of how we grow in our faith. Tall talk for a talking crutch. Crutch is not a slur, Todd. A crutch can be a badge of courage for someone who has confronted their doubts in the face of difficulty and pain. Well, this is going in the emotional fanny pack for sure. I know what I have to do now. Murphy, can we talk for a minute? Okay, so next we have the blessing of the 12 sons of Israel. Awesome! Can't wait! <clears throat> and Israel said, Assemble and listen, sons of Jacob. Listen to your father Israel. Reuben, you are my firstborn, my might, the first sign of my strength, excelling in honor, excelling in power, excelling in other things. The name's Dot Winters. I'm a private eye. It says so on my tax returns. Come in. The dame burst into my office like a ruptured water pipe. Is this Winter's detective agency? It is. What brings you to this part of town? Like a kitten that's wandered into the middle of a square dance. Um, I need your help. I'm your man. Milk and cookies? No, thank you. I believe my blessings have been stolen. What type of blessing are we talking about here? God's blessing. What makes you so sure your blessings have been stolen? My life has taken a turn in recent months. I lost my job. The bills keep piling up. I tell you, there's foul play afoot. Is there anyone who would have a reason to steal God's blessing from you? Tina Teeth Tenor. She's got a flower shop on Avenue A. I think it's a front for selling stolen blessings. I don't have proof, but I know she's up to no... Todd, chew with your mouth closed. I'll take the case. <sighs> Thank you, detective. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have some work to do. I never told you my name. I never told you mine. Yes, but yours is on the door, and your desk, and that name tag on your trench coat. The name's B. Cicero. We'll get your blessings back, Miss Cicero, even if I have to dress up like a cabbage to do it. Why would you need to dress up like a cabbage? Why, indeed. Why, indeed. The city is full of secrets, like a pillowcase plush with Halloween candy. Secrets buried beneath secrets covered in chocolate secret sauce. And in this city, there's only one place to look for the chewy secret center, Sock Town. If anyone's trying to move stolen blessings, the Sock Kingpin would know about it. Password. Argyle. Well, 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 if it isn't my favorite antagonist, Dot Winters. Awfully brave of you, venturing into Socktown unaccompanied. I got a tip that someone might be pushing blessings in the area. God's blessings? Exactly. Ugh, don't remind me. They've been spreading throughout Socktown for weeks now. I myself was blessed just the other day, and no matter all my attempts, I cannot get rid of it. I'd have thought God's blessings would be a good thing. Now we're obligated to spread God's blessing. Well, if you don't want your blessing, I'll take it off your hands for you. That's not how blessings work, I'm afraid. You can't lose it no matter how much you share it. Who started all of this? We've narrowed patient zero down to when Elfie purchased flowers for his wife's birthday. We'll have been together for six years in March. Which flower shop? Tenor Flowers on Avenue A. You just confirmed all my suspicions. Please, end this plague of blessings for our sake, or else we're all doomed to an existence of charity and kindness. Doomed! God's blessing was spreading like mold across a damp basement floor. I needed to hurry up and close this case. If everyone who's blessed passes that blessing along to only two other people, why, it could cover the whole planet in no time. The trail circled back to the very place I was told to start at. Funny how that works sometimes. Hello, how may I help you? Drop the charade. Where are the blessings? God's blessings? A little birdie told me that you're stealing blessings from people and then pushing them at three times markup. You don't sell or steal blessings. I mean, 
that's not even how blessings work. How about you tell me how they do work? Well, I don't know exactly, but I do know I did not receive God's blessing at the expense of anyone else. I don't know why I was chosen, but eventually I realized that all I can do is be grateful that it came to me and try to share it any way I can. And then I felt led to open this flower shop. It's really cute. How's business? It's been hard work. At times I've questioned if it was even a blessing at all. But I've stuck with it and business is picking up. <coughs> I think your fica tree just coughed. Miss Cicero! Miss Cicero? You're the one who gave me the blessing. I owe you an apology. I thought you had stolen it from me, but now I realize I was mistaken. Why were you hiding in her store? That's not important. What's important is we all learned a lesson today. And what lesson was that? That God's blessing doesn't mean everything goes great for you all the time. And just because you encounter hardship doesn't mean that God has abandoned you. God's blessing is a call to be a blessing to those around us. Flowers for everybody! Yay! Yay! Giving each the blessing appropriate to him. <gasps> Flower blessings for everybody! What? What indeed, Becky? What indeed? Let me get this straight, Joseph. Your brothers took your awesome rainbow coat, threw you in a pit, and sold you into slavery, and then your slave boss made you head of the household until his wife made a pass at you. You refused, she got angry, and framed you for illicit hanky-panky, which got you thrown into Egyptian prison next to I, the humble cupbearer. Is that an appropriate distilling of your woe? Yay, humble cupbearer. That is rough, Joseph. That is rough and tumble. What crime hast thou committed to warrant imprisonment? I dropped and shattered eight of Pharaoh's goblets. Pharaoh threw me down here to think about what I did. Speaking of cups, I had a dream last night. Was it a pleasant dream? Nothing is pleasant when I shut my eyes. Humble Baker, you too had a dream? More like a night terror. And wouldn't you know it, the prison dream interpreter threw out his back so there's no one to interpret our dreams. Humble cupbearer, humble baker, tell me your dreams. You should probably stretch first. Ta Okay, so there's this vine with three branches with three clusters of grapes hanging off. Pharaoh's cup was in my hand, and I took the grapes, squeezed them into Pharaoh's cup, and then Pharaoh shows up, but it's not Pharaoh. I mean, it's him, but he kind of looks like my dad. Anyway, he drinks from the cup, and then I woke up. This is what your dream means. The three branches are three days. In three days, Pharaoh will restore your position. Bonus! Go ahead, humble baker. I had a dream. I was carrying bread, and I dropped the bread, and... The booties ate the blood. Hmm. Pharaoh's gonna cut off your head and impale your body on a pole. That's not age-appropriate. Humble cupbearer, when all goes well for you, remember me and show me kindness. Put in a good word for me with Pharaoh. It's the first thing I'll do. <laughs> 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 you gotta admit, I'm showing improvement. Humble cupbearer, I just had the oddest dream. And the palace dream interpreter sprained his knee, so he's out until Ra knows when. Those guys need to limber up before they interpret dreams. Say, remember when you threw me in jail like two years ago? I just now remembered I was supposed to tell you about this Hebrew named Joseph who interprets dreams. Seriously, this guy is good. Bring this Joseph to me. So, the humble cupbearer told me you have a knack for interpreting dreams. I cannot do it, but God will give Pharaoh the answers he seeks. Okay, so in the dream, there's seven fat cows that get eaten by seven thin ugly cows. And then, seven plump stalks of grain get eaten by seven withered stalks of grain. And also, the withered grain looks a lot like my dad. God is giving Pharaoh a farming forecast. Seven years of great abundance are coming all across Egypt followed by seven years of severe famine. So, the next 14 years ought to be handled delicately and with care. You should store the grain surplus from the first seven years to prepare for the lean seven to follow. Sounds great. Go ahead and do that. That thing you just said. Wait, what? Seriously? It's done. You're now in charge of all Egypt. <clears throat> hey, everybody, if you need anything in the next 14 years, talk to Joseph, okay? Okay. Well, that was abrupt. Something to drink? Joseph heeded his own advice, and it totally worked out. Joseph forgave his brothers for selling him into slavery and assured them that while they meant to totally wreck his life, God meant it for good. Which brings us to the moral of the story, that God is always in control, each event carefully planned out, with Joseph a spiritual wooden puppet forever at the Almighty's mercy and whim. The End no, no, no. Children, your play was lovely and adorable, but I'm afraid you've come away with the wrong lesson entirely. More often than not, suffering comes from evil human intent. 
God's actions are in response to suffering and evil, and the resulting good is not always immediately apparent. But if you look close enough from far enough away, you might just realize that... Suffering and hardship and tears, death and strife will be constants for all of your life. There'll always be pain, but you can sing in the rain, for the Lord turns evil into good. Evil into good. When your troubles won't bend and it seems there's no this is too much to bear. You gripe and you groan, but no, you're never alone. For the Lord turns evil into good.